Jack's mad, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm, I'm going ape, if you will. <laughs> Jesus. Howdy. My name is Jackson Sturgeon. I'm here with uh, Seth Dranus and Mr. Chris Taylor. Today we're here to talk about gorillas and their origins in Hollywood and their, you know, initial monsterdom, if you will. <clears throat> and, and, and more specifically in the context of, like, monster movies as a whole. Correct. correct yes. Yeah, like I mean, it's probably the earliest example of a monster movie. Like, Besides, you know, like the old, old, old Frankensteins and, you know, your Count Orlocks, you, know, you know, plays. <laughs> and, you know, you've got... Um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah, and then, I mean, you've got um, Der Golem, which is a German movie, which was about a, a Jew who resurrected a golem and he made it cause terror. It was a trilogy. And then one came out in 1915, one came out in 1920, the, one, the other one came out in 1925. The only one that exists still is the 1921. And then before that, you had the Frankenstein movie, which was somewhat directed by Mary Shelley in 1910. And then anything before that, the closest, the oldest, farthest back you go, technically the oldest movie monster before, you know, Trip to the Moon in 19 fucking 03. Two. You had a uh, two, right? Two. You had a uh, Devil's Castle in 1898. It was a uh, five minute short. Scared the living fuck out of people back then, though, man, because they were using smoke effects, making people disappear. That's like the moon movie, right? No, that's Trip to the Moon. That's yeah, Trip to the Moon. Tri okay. Yeah, but I'm before before there. Trip to the Moon, they had. It. Like, that one still scares the shit out of people. They just they think that. Faces creepy and stuff. Oh, everything! Like, everything. It's not the faces; it's the crab people, man. Yeah, the crabs. <laughs> like this was back before we actually knew it was on the, the giant enemy crab people. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> but um, really, the first like stereotypical repertory monster that you would see in, in in cinema was the gorilla, and that was because of well, it wasn't initially and directly because of Ngagi, which is a movie where. Uh, a bunch of people go on a safari. They kill a whole lot of animals. Yeah. It's kind of like the hungry, hungry caterpillar. You know, you got two gorilla, and like two apes, uh, like two like orangutans. It's like it's like Noah's Ark if he was killing yeah. all the animals. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. but they do it in like weird order. They, they even have to make up animals to kill. See, like you yeah. get three leopards, one rhino, two hippos, two orangutans. Um, three zebras, one giraffe. Did you just memorize the list or? I've seen the movie a couple times. Oh, he's, he's <laughs> the only person in this room who's, who's gone out of his way to watch it a few times. I've probably seen it more than anyone on the planet. <laughs> wow, well, you actually probably seen the whole actually world record true for, yeah. for Ngagi views. That's, that's, <laughs> a, that's a, a confident statement. But this was a movie that like inspired King Kong because Marion C. Cooper, the guy who, who made this shit and was the the main like uh, what was it? not not what's the fucking word. Oh my God. Directed King Kong. Conceptualizer. He was the yeah, main yeah. conceptualizer for this movie because he saw Ngagi and he was like, hmm. I a gorilla? This way better, yeah. A gorilla? A woman? Hmm. <laughs> There's something here. This, this, this might be something. What Tribes. If, like, what if the gorilla was big and the woman was white? Hmm. And see. the woman was Fay Ray. <laughs> Fay Ray, who. Wow. Now we have a movie. Yeah. Fay Ray, who is considered by uh, one in the circle as the most beautiful woman ever to exist and to have walked the planet, which is a fair He's some really horny guy to be saying some stuff like that. He's <laughs> really into bugs. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But, um, I mean, if we, if, if we just want to talk, like, objectively blowing me away just upon first sight, yeah, probably the most beautiful woman in existence. Of course. Um, but uh, speaking of... Fay Ray and Mr. Marion, uh, he brought her along, a uh, beautiful woman, and uh, he wanted to make a movie that was a, a giant gorilla, and they would sacrifice. It's nearly a, a very identical plot to the Ngagi, if you think about it. It's the, the tribes people sacrifice a woman to a gorilla mm -hmm. so uh, for protection because so, they don't... Because the whole thing was like the subplot, which was not at all projected by the narrative in the, the narration of the film, uh, they're uh, sacrificing these women to gorillas because they want fertility and protection from the animals, right? Interesting. I don't know where they got that, and I don't know. Actually, you know, tribal religious talk to the earth, talk to the animals. You know, I don't know. Peyote, just, all that stuff. It's interesting because that's that's just when you watch Ngagi, you don't see that at all. 
uh-huh. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's just... It's mostly just, like... Like hunting tourist footage. I mean. Yeah, that's actually it's like what it is. is. Yeah, it's it's seventy five percent stock footage of uh, a hunting trip that happened in nineteen twenty five. You know, and, and then interspliced with like studio footage. Some yeah, it's it's really a, a wacky film. And at the very end, at the very end, actually about eighty five percent of the way through. You get to see this thing called Tortadilla, which is pretty cool. It's the literal highlight of the movie. Yeah. It's my favorite part, um, for sure. My favorite part is when the guy says, we have now entered Ngagi country. I just... I do. That's a good line. It is a good line. You know. It's, the, it's one of the only things I, like, well, remember from it. There's another sure. good line. It's a line that I've, I've talked about uh, with you guys before. He goes, uh, uh, this uh, rhinoceros was becoming a real tough customer. <laughs> Talking about the rhinoceros that charged at the camera. <laughs> they, they, they shot keep right that in, the, in the face. Yeah. yeah. Keep keep that specifically. Can, in can mind. you give some more context as to like the history of Ngagi, like up until recently, like being banned? Okay. And, oh, so, yeah. Ngagi was released in 1930. It got banned about six months after its release. Dang, that was fast. Uh, not and because now most of this is like allegedly like like what race stuff or like well what? it was more than just race stuff. They didn't give a shit about that back then. Yeah. Fair enough. Gonna, so it got it got cancelled, if you will, because <laughs> not be not because of the gorilla rape and sacrifice, but because it was fake. It was fake. <laughs> it was fake. And everybody and people saw it and they were like, yeah, this is this is obviously fake. You want to know how? Where, 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 at what point during the movie when do you I think most people realized it? When it was shot on two completely different types of film. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed that pretty early on. Like, um, I, I think, I think that might though be like the best part about the Tortadillo is like it's so. If weird. you haven't figured it out up until this point, like there you go. <laughs> <laughs> It's, like, it's, it's just like wait, flashing it, like right. This is fake. Like, yeah. So yeah, do you get, this movie is bullshit. Yeah, it, it is. It was entirely bullshit, and they just they got rid it. of it. <laughs> and the subject matter was that's just the interesting. Top. Like they would, they just ban it because it's just like lies. Mm-hmm. Like I f- you couldn't get, you couldn't do that nowadays. No, of course I mean, not. But it, I could see in like what thirty one was it thirty thirty. I could see back then like <laughs> so few films like, like like it being this like thing where everybody should you can't you can't present like a mm-hmm. false. You know that's of course it, it's it's more of like a situation where like. I guess they were they were presenting it. It was like before like Iron Age, right? Or like, like a yeah. docu thing. But um unfortunately, like back then the concept of a docudrama or like a, a found footage film really didn't exist back then. So like that's honestly that film is it, pretty it, influential it, well, for a genre that yeah. existed and eighty years later. Like what's the intention? Is is he trying to make like a it was just like a, a Blair Witch style fake documentary or, and, and, and like lead people in that way or is he just trying to make a buck so by throwing some stock this, together like yes with, <laughs> what yeah like so where is where's that line at in Gagi, this is just an interesting fact about its release it was only screamed at nighttime like each time yeah why because it didn't it couldn't be shown during the day it it's was like Adult Swimmer. No, no, it, right? it was <laughs> the very first Grindhouse movie. That's amazing. I like that. That's, that's a good fact. Now, was, we didn't even get into the reason why this movie is relevant right now. Yeah, so basically, it is connected to King Kong. I don't think I need to... Can we now... now can, I, can we sort of explain our little build-up to it, like our personal story, how we, we were... We were we were starting up like like an early yeah. version of this podcast, right? Mm-hmm. And and we wanted to start with with King Kong at that time. Uh-huh. That would be the first movie we would look at. And we took some time to kind of research it, look up you know production history, and, and that's how we learned about Ngagi, right? Mm-hmm. And at the time, it was just you know, the the main thing we were we were like, oh, this is a fan movie. Like it, it, we basically thought this was going to be the most offensive movie ever made yeah. because it was. There was a lot of just build up well, to that was, around that so idea. Ba- well, not I wouldn't. It's still not obviously banned recently, but because mm-hmm. of said ban, it just kind of di- it, in the public eye, it got disappeared. Like, and like yeah, that's sort of what it and, led up to was that like like what like a couple days later they announced like right after we just randomly found out about this movie we'd never heard of before mm-hmm. they just announced it's finally getting a Blu-ray release. Yeah, yeah. Like, so like we manifested this. So, so here's what happened, right? We were we were looking up. 
guerrilla movies. I one of us found in Gagi, and I was doing research on it, and then I think a couple of days later, it was like just, one, of, one of us went ooh, de- depictions of guerrilla rape, and all three that of us was you. Oh, like, turned oh, around, you. like what? <laughs> that was definitely you. probably yeah. It's it was mind boggling to hear about, you know. And I found it and I bought it for twenty dollars, you know, plus shipping. And um, we were so was, I'm excited, oh, so yeah. excited. And even the night of, even the night of watching, right? We were the first people to view this movie outside the people who <laughs> showed it. By the way, we must have been. There's no one else no, who could have. I actually, been. I know for a fact we were. <laughs> I was the very first person to play to crack open a brand new copy of Ngagi. Yes. yes. And everyone who saw it last is probably dead. So, yeah. Right. Like, except for the people who made the the, the, the Blu-ray, I guess. Like anybody involved with the yeah. distribution of this. Yeah. And we, I pulled up here. We we were gonna put it in. We had to wait two hours to uh, to watch it because of a camera battery. I forgot all about yeah. that. <laughs> so we were just sitting there waiting for it. Just the, the most it, intense. Like we were like edging up. for two hours. Yes. Like, and then we know. finally popped it in. And it had the coolest title card, which was the German poster, which yes. was almost a one of a kind. German poster is awesome. Yes, and we waited. Yeah, I plan on buying that poster in the future. Uh-huh. That is one of my favorites. It's the it's that this really cool, like very ornate German Art Deco yeah. design. It's got a yellow gorilla, red and goggy, dark teal on on like the, in the background. It's very pretty. Yeah, very very pretty. Um, but anyway, we're about to watch it. We pop it in, and for about a, maybe 50 minutes, <laughs> not a single word was spoken no one except is... for do something. Holy God. Well, God-y. I think, no, I, I, I'm going to be honest. I think for the first, like, 45, 50 minutes, like, nobody was saying anything, and, and none of us wanted to admit that, mm-hmm. like, that we knew this was shit, right? Like, like we we were bored out of our minds, yeah. and we we were like, we built this up, so we put this on such a pedestal yeah. that like, it's gonna be heartbreaking. And and I know at some point, like, it it it, must it happened. Sad. It was the exact same thing that happened when we were watching Son of Godzilla, oh, yeah. this, where where oh. one of us just like turned around and said, "Are you like bored? Like, yeah. fucking do something, Christ!" Like, Son of Godzilla, <laughs> like. Seth and I got really excited one day to watch that movie. I thought that was such a... I remember that being such an entertaining film. It's the first movie right after, like, ever. What happened? I love that movie. And then all of a sudden, Snoresville. (laughs) So, basically, we get about 50 minutes into it. The movie was so boring that... There were like two moments that actually had us completely out of our seats, just in antis- only in anticipation. One was obviously the tortadilla. Tortadilla, we were- that made us all launch forward. Like, I wrote a song and, about and, and, and and not song not only it. like not only is it just an amazing moment in and of itself because mm-hmm. it's th- there's there's levels to it because first off, the tortadilla itself is just plopped into this film. Yeah. Like, uh, it's it's a bullshit film that's lying about everything that's going on. But everything you're seeing is real animals, real footage of animals, real natives, real native huts and stuff. Stuff and, that uh, yeah. people are very basically well aware just of just like manufactured situations and whatnot. And then it just it just says, oh, and here's a tortadillo. I, it, it's it's the most jarring. Like like, why did they decide to make to throw one lot? It had to have been a joke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They had to have been set going like, I bet we can just make something up, and if we just throw it in here with a bunch of real stuff, no one will question it. I think it was that exact same thought process, but it was not a joke. It, <laughs> they, they just they thought they needed some legitimacy by like giving something slightly yeah. unbelievable. Like exactly. Like oh, it's like meta. So someone someone would go, that's unbelievable. There's no way that exists, mm-hmm. and that's like. But then why would they put it in there? It must be real, yeah. right? Like and that's exactly what's going on. Tortadillo, you know? for those who don't know, <laughs> why wouldn't you know? Um, it is a turtle with a dragon tail. <laughs> A spine and some wings, like literal spikes, wing, like a tortoise. It's, it's. I don't know where the armadillo part comes in. No, nope, like. no it's clue. To be the spines, but that's. I, really but that's not. Deep. That's really pushing it. Yeah, that's because they're clearly like like iguana spikes, yeah, right? Exactly. Like, <laughs> and 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 it's 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 even better. But it, it hits even harder because nothing happens for that forty-five to fifty minutes, and then that moment just jumps out of nowhere. So it, it like. 
it's 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 like if you've gone. I, I, I can't think of anything in my head right now that's not a sex joke. <laughs> it's just the the build up to it, and then the release when you see it. It makes it a much more satisfying <laughs> yeah. like yeah. moment. And then, no, and, then, and then nothing else happens for well, the next. And then 50 for minutes. for about five minutes, nothing. And then we hear, welcome, to, we're now entering a gaggy country. And, and we're like, we, okay, okay, now it's all, here we go. Yeah, we we're like blood yeah. decks, it's yeah. just building yeah. up to the end. And then right? we're sitting, and we're all pretty much lean forward at this point, just staring at the screen, just waiting to see this, right? And then you get this shot of, like, you can't, you can't, you can see nothing. It's these gorillas moving behind trees. It just looks like black circle. It, it looks. It looks like. It's, it looks like the Bigfoot footage, but like yes. even like blurrier and, and like and more trees. Black and white, like more trees. Yeah. No, the the costume for Ngagi is amazing. There's I will not a give whole it lot that. of good shots of it though. No, and that's what I'm confused about. But we am- gotta we gotta point out these are real shots of an actual orangutan mm-hmm. interspliced with with, yeah. with the gorilla with shots suit. of yeah. Charles Gamora in a suit. Yeah. Mr. Charles Gamore, the gorilla guy, you know. Um, <laughs> He's the old school Andy Circus. <laughs> no, legit, yes, he was, and it's unbelievable. Um, but not nah, so they get to this like path, and and then Gagi's just walking down, and then you see him, right? And it's that's the, the first time you see Ngagi, he's like, okay, he's there. Like this movie has and, him. And, and again, to give you context, like the three of us are expecting graphic depictions of rape yes. right like so so there's like like we're waiting for this train crash to uh-huh. occur right? and then, pre-code american hollywood and we're like this has got to be just the worst yeah. like, and then it immediately cuts to a uh a a, a woman with a, a, a black woman with her tits out <laughs> and uh sitting on a log um and it's not a tribes woman right because it was this was a hollywood shot and then the gorilla comes up and takes her Right, and you're, and then we're sitting. It's like, okay, it's about to happen. Here right? we go. Here yeah, we go, let's right? go. Pretty much, yeah. That's how it was like. It was like people watching NASCAR, you know. <laughs> except there's a gorilla and, and a woman. Um, but not, and, and then they're they're jutting down the path, and then it's exactly like NASCAR. That's then, a good. That's a really good comparison. <laughs> immediately followed by that, he gets shot. Over. <laughs> Movie's gone. Movie's done. Movie's over. You get a five minute. We had, we, there was like just some shots of him shuffling her, like, 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 come along, like, walking yeah. through the like woods. Beating and that's, her along, yeah, yeah. basically, yeah. yeah. And that's. That's Ngagi. And that's it. And it's it's just. Watch it. If you. One want, of the biggest disappointments yeah. in my entire life. W- watch it if you want to see everything. I think that might have been our fault, but at the same time. It, it's history absolutely our fault. And, yeah. and and for for wanting to see graphic depictions of rape, maybe we deserve it. But. It, it, they it's, never it, said it, graphic. So I don't give a shit. You gotta understand. It was. The buildup was what did it, right? If yeah. I would have just said, hey, I found this movie, like, and we didn't talk about it at all, whatever. It was only disappointing because of but that. But I, I can still think back to the... the it's still an enjoyable experience as a, as a story, right? Yes, like just as a, as a As an experience, the three of us... It makes me want to watch the movie again. It Maybe it makes you want to watch the movie again, but I'll, I'll be perfectly happy if all I ever see is, is Tordy Dillon. The only thing I'll say is I'm really glad that Ngagi, like is a direct inspiration to another film three years later. King Kong. Oh. Yeah. So King Kong... Somewhat similar plot. People go to an island or, you know, Africa. As we established, yeah. directly inspired by Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, they meet these tribes, people who capture and sacrifice women to a giant gorilla this time. Fabre, uh, we've gone through this. The only reason I'm speeding through this is because people fucking know King Kong. It's, yes. a, it's, a, it's the most classic It is story. ingrained in society. Therefore, it is ingrained in people's heads. It's like the genetic memory. And it's law. so, like, the story itself is basically, like, the most base, like, the most simple, like, damsel in distress, kidnapped by monster, mm-hmm. good guy must save. But it's, yeah. it, it's so much it's like it just happens to have a giant gorilla this mm-hmm. time and how many countless films since that have done that exact plot well during that period of time those couple of decades and those following a lot mm-hmm. unbelievable there was uh, there's been a, a very a very king kong sharp found decline. a formula yes yeah. very yeah. much so <laughs> Yeah, and there's been a very sharp decline in gorilla movies recently. I went to go see Rampage out of hope, but it wasn't that good. It was okay. 
you know, I was expecting a little bit more from The Rock, but I think he's not the most electrifying man anymore. <laughs> not in the Hollywood industry, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, no. His return was amazing. You know, the pop was incredible, but, you know. Yeah, but that's not the same industry. Of course, it's not the same industry, and that's my point. Anyway. <laughs> so, there's a moment where... Enough of Rocky Mind. Yeah, <laughs> there's a moment where um, Fay Ray comes out on the boat wearing a um, very nice dress. A gown, and, uh, a gown, if you will, with these metal jewelry hip things that accentuate her legs. And they knew what they were doing. They knew, yeah. they knew exactly what they were doing. And um, it's it's probably about seventy five percent obtuse, you know. Like you can you can see mostly thirties obtuse is really funny too. <laughs> yeah, because it's like very it's very obvious what's going on, you know, the party that's happening inside the house, but they're not really showing it. But. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Mr. Carl, he's talking to uh, her and he's giving her direction. He's changing out the polarizer that's on the uh, that's on the lens, right? And he's telling him, uh, she asks him, uh, do you always shoot your own shots, right? And he goes, uh, ah, yeah, ever since I went on a safari back a couple years ago, had a rhino charge directly at the camera. I shot the old guy, but, you know, the guy stopped filming it, which is exactly what happened in Ngagi. A direct rip from that movie therefore putting it in canon with in canon. In canon. it is it is the prequel to king kong nobody talks it is about. a trilogy not Con- a duology confirmed <laughs> it. it is the fir- it is the only trilogy that the first movie sucks Nobody's absolute talking dick about that, but it's true in the like the first movie sucks absolute dick the second two are amazing that never happens <laughs> not at all ever <laughs> You know, you guys are really just stretching this and then just like, oh, yeah, this is the truth now. We're going to go with this. <laughs> like, and I, it's, I'm going with it. But it's it's just it's one of those things where when I, I was I was sitting on a couch, uh, me and Chris were watching King Kong because we just got the VHS. And we're like, we got to watch it. Right. And I was sitting there watching it for the first time after Ngagi, right? Yes, yes. And he and then he went to the bathroom or something. Because nobody had seen Ngagi, so it's like no one could point no, out in any kind no, of no. like like IMDB trivia or anything that there was a reference to Ngagi. In. No, like and I'm, s- I'm sitting here on the couch, right? And he says the line, and I just start screaming. <laughs> I, was just, I, was just, I was just like, ah, ah, Chris. <laughs> While he's like taking a shit. Yes, I don't know what he's doing, bastard. I was, I was like, yes, I was losing my mind. He just referenced the goggy. It was like I, clo- as close to a stroke I've ever had. <laughs> no one tell you he lived for those full circle moments. Oh, yeah. That, but that's on a different level. <laughs> that is so far out there. <laughs> That is a 70-year full circle. That's like a lot of... Fill- so it was like all this build-up we had was actually building up to that moment. Specifically for we me, thought, this we date... We finally time. got payoff, yeah. <laughs> it was... Oh, Lord. Anyway, continue, okay, it's, continuing it was, with King Kong. <laughs> King Kong is, is a splendid and, and wonderful movie. Everybody should watch it. And you see at the very end, right, King Kong falls off the Empire State Building after getting shot a whole bunch by the planes. And, uh, and it's just it's a fucking spectacle. Um, he falls down, and then Mr. Carl Dunham, he's sitting there. Everybody's, everybody's, <laughs> everybody's happy and smoking their pipes because that's what they did. And they carried that on until, like, 19, what, 56 as well. Uh, something um, like that. Yeah. And they, uh, so they're sitting there smoking, and he was like, oh, it was beauty that killed the beast. I'm like, Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> that is, like, like, that's a stretch. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's... That's a really, really, really Ladies rough way of putting it. Le- no, it to- if it was Beauty that killed him. No, actually, it was Carl, you. If it was anyone, it was Leave you. It to Carl Denham to try and like, like, like a uh, uh, cult of personality ass, like to like trying to trying to weasel his way out of this. Like, I'll say something witty. I'll say something that sounds deep. It's like, mm-hmm. no, that doesn't connect so to the situation at all. I mean, Kongs. I, like, he could have said and literally anything else. He could have said, that's a lot of fish, and it would have been a better option, a less incriminating option. Like, he sees Kong, he's like, well, the plane's got him. That's a lot of fish. So, Boy, I, I sure got a mess to clean up. I was at his <laughs> collar. Like, <laughs> so. Like, like, I still want to talk about King Kong, right? Like, mm-hmm. Okay. Can we, like, there's a lot to talk about with this film. Like, I'm. It's been discussed so many it's times. It's been discussed, but we haven't discussed it yet. That's fair. 
I just like like I like I don't know where to start with it. Like okay, I, uh, well like I mean, like just the specific things I enjoy. Like I think the number one thing that um, we all enjoy is probably just like the production value of the film. Of I course, think. the stop motion. Like, is... Everyone's already said you know the the stop motion looks great even for even for today and and it does. And there's some shot there's. I think it's one of the Stegosaurus shots. Looks oh, it's fantastic! A- amazing. I, it, it, it doesn't even it shot, doesn't even when look they fake. first see to, the, to when me, they at see least, the Stegosaurus like, and then it looks over at them and starts I think roaring. that one, yeah, that's when like I remember that. That's the best. Sh- I think that's the best shot in the movie. Like, well, I, like, that my uh, that sticks. I saw that when I was like four or five, and that's st- I, I, I didn't see this. Left. See, I didn't see this movie till like way fucking later, yeah. right? So like I'm going into this now, and, and like you guys know me, right? Like I'm I'm very I don't want to say I try to be anti mainstream or whatever, but mm-hmm. like you know, I've, I've your not, favorite movie. I don't give a fuck about Star Wars. I got bored watching it. Uh, you know, I haven't seen Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like just just a bunch of like he hasn't seen a lot of movies. Big yet. stuff like that. I just don't care. So like, whenever people talk about King Kong, it's just a, a fucking classic. Blah blah. blah. Like I, I kind of went into it with that like. And it's not like I go in like wanting to hate mainstream things like some kind of jackass or whatever, mm-hmm. but just I go in skeptical because I'm like, everybody's seen this. Let's 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 see if it's really as, as good as everyone let's says. Let's see it through you know? the lens of. Uh, I look at right I now. tend to look at it through a more critical eye, yeah. right? And and so I'm expecting this to just kind of go ah eh, whatever. And everything about this movie just blew me away. Yeah. <laughs> like I I like it's. It's rare that a movie leaves me feeling like a child and putting a big grin on my face mm-hmm. like that, but like that was one of the most feel good experiences, like just viewing anything ever. I never uh, have a bad time watching it. Like it, it's it's like one of those movies that has like a solid story, characters that you can latch on to for the most part. Uh, can, there, can we? I mean, can we talk about the characters for a second? I like there's like at least three. There's like Carl. at least three of them I want to talk Everybody's about. Everybody's favorite, I think. Is Carl. Carl Denham is is like maybe like in my top ten favorite protagonists of, of anything. <laughs> he's, I, he's pretty great. He I, when I when I first put it in again, I wanted to be critical. I was like, oh, this guy's a fucking schmuck, and like that was my thought for the first couple of minutes. And, and I, mean, I understand idea. that's what you're like supposed to feel, but just the more you watch it, and the more like. It, his performance is such a just believably like passionate. Like artist, like mm-hmm. he gives such a fuck about what what he wants to do, like and and like as a wannabe like director and putting this stuff together myself, it's I I can like connect to that. So I'm I'm sitting here and I'm going, this guy, like I love this guy. Mm-hmm. It's he's, like we're gonna put his name in lights and we're gonna make you all rich. He's like, like, he's like that a, guy. Like he's kind of you know like cheesy 1930s. You know like obviously no one in no one in guy. real life really talks like this, but mm-hmm. like that's that's what's so enjoyable about him. He's like he's like a caricature and and he's. He uh, uh, there's no moment where I he didn't feel believable, which surprised me with someone who's who's played so like goofily as him, like like surprisingly goofy, right? Like, and he has a very also like masculine presence. As masculine, well. and, and 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 I thought you were gonna kind of say mad scientist there. There's definitely a bit of mad well, scientist in him he, as well. Mad scientist, as in he has the drive of a mad scientist to complete. This uh, it's, it's it's really the interesting. Very yeah. similar attitudes. I, I, I see which. Like I, I understand that. That makes sense. Uh, Chris, yeah. what do you think about Carl? Carl is probably one of those characters that, like, at first you you look at him and you think, uh, I mean. I want to be on his side because I want to see like he's got he's got a goal. You know? It's very clear early on he's going to be the protagonist slash hidden antagonist he, because he's causing all these he, problems. He's, like, he's that argue, came off very he's very early on. An early version of an antihero, but he's not necessarily. He's kind of an antihero. Yeah. He's not necessarily one because he has goals, he has ambitions, and you want to see. But him he'll do whatever he them. wants to get to. And, like he'll put other people's lives on the line, yes, right? Yes, and like, like but un- unfortunately, those p- those lives he puts on the line are way too damn willing to also follow. Uh, exactly. Like, and they all agree. You know why? Let's be fair. You like, know why? Because <laughs> he's so goddamn he's charismatic. Got all that charisma. Well, he's so one of those charismatic. Guys. Well, as of right now, he does. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes. 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 Well, 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 we'll get to that. But but like planting seeds. We're planting seeds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Set up. I like it. Yes. Uh, and 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 one of, one of the my favorite scenes is is and I'm using this as a transition here. Uh, is when he 
wrangles up uh, his actress mm -hmm. for, for his movie, right? His, his scene where he gets Fay Ray, which... First off, I'll say a woman who looks like her would never be no. poor and no. having her like, <laughs> well, what was she, that. stealing fruit or something like she that? She stole an apple, which I think is supposed to be an allegory for some Genesis shit. Oh, it's that. like a biblical thing. Yeah, yeah I like that. Well, <laughs> King Kong movies back then is like, it's like a fucking Wizard of Oz. It's full of this esoteric knowledge. Like, it's got a lot she of... Repre sorry, she represents temptation. Exactly. Apple. There no, you go. Yes, yeah. and King Kong, <laughs> and, and, and the beastly nature of man, and that's what it all represents. Of course. Car yeah, yeah. Carl's, need, like, Carl's need for her, which is impressively not sexual or lustful. It's what, that's one of the best... That I yeah. was just about to get to that. I, like, as, as the horniest man in existence, like, who was horn-dogging over... Fay Ray the entire movie just about how gorgeous she was. Mm -hmm. I fucking love how it like it didn't come off creepy. Nothing he said to her came off as like he's being like a rapey weird like Do you want to know why? Uh, sure, yeah. The entire movie is about the dichotomy between true man and modern man. Ooh. Let's hear it. King Kong represents true man. The beastly desire. You're absolutely right, though. Without like any hesitation, will do anything to protect yeah, yeah. and keep this. Versus the polite, non-rapey, you know, yeah. modern, non-primal man who's got class and charm and is charismatic. He, he sees her as like and not, like a symbol of lust, but he doesn't want to like take advantage of that in, exactly. in, in, in like a sexual. He's taking advantage of it in a different way, right? Yes. Okay, I, I like like I need you to be a starlet and. Whether you're aware of it or not, you are the prime like you're, example. You're of that. fucking gorgeous, yes. and you need to like I I want to make something out of yeah. you. Like you I want clearly, everybody. Like, like, and, and and you can say oh he's he's manipulating her, he's using her for his own, but like she clearly needs him, like because mm -hmm. she's like very poor, pouring, like she's like stealing shit off the street. Like yeah. this isn't she doesn't have an option, right? Like and that sounds weird, but like. It's it's like a mutual beneficial like yeah, it, nowadays you root be, for both of them. Nowadays he'd be like that stereotypical like let me take pictures of you. Oh, take, let me get some. Yeah, you know, sexual. open up your they, yeah. like, open up your shirt a little bit. Yeah, or something. exactly. Like Carl is just like sure. okay, we're gonna get you to do like you'll look. You're sexy. gonna be my star. You're gonna well, look you're beautiful. gonna be a star. We're gonna put you in my monkey movie. <laughs> yeah, and it's a monkey movie about a monkey movie. It's amazing. Yeah. It's it's got it's just it's just like really weird love. Oh yeah, may we point out? Let's just get to the island already. Let's let's not be Peter Jacksons about this. Let's okay. just get to the fucking island. Okay, so yeah, let's get to the point. There's blackface. Yes. Yes. Well, there's a little bit. There's a little bit. It's not a lot of black. Actually, I think it's if there is, there's not any like next no. to none. It's it, and it's, then you have it's. There's also you have to be like really trying to be offended to be offended by these. See, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like we don't have enough black people. We're just gonna. Yeah. Yeah. They just, yeah. they just need it. Yeah, that was, exactly. that was I mean, exactly like, that's what, what it is. they did. That's all it was. And, and they just, they, we need a tribal scene here. Yeah. It's 1933. We don't. It, it's not even a thought in our heads to not do this. Of like, course, and one other race thing, modern race thing. Uh, there's an Asian guy, Mr. Wong, who's. Oh, you know, Charlie. Yes, yes, Mr. Yeah, Charlie Wong, which is his full name. Apparently, he's more offensive yes. than the natives. Yes. So I, like, However, in the second movie, again. He has a much better comeuppance and, and character presence and better. And he's more lines. He's actually in like, the first one. He's more comic relief. Yes, right? like, but in this one, he's also comic relief in the second one. But he's just like a great guy. Yeah, like loyal to Mister Carl no matter what. And how could you not be? Like he's just another, just another guy that got wrangled in by uh, his career. We'll, we'll we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, Charlie, and or Charlie, Carl, and Ann coming along this boat ride, and the cap. There, there, there's a skipper on the boat, uh, yeah. Mr. Anglehorn. Um, or and then there's um, what's his name, Jack, or Jack Dr oh, Driscoll. Thought, like, the, oh, that's the that's the that's the Agent Brody and Jeff Bridges. There wasn't a, there wasn't a ah uh, yes yes. Uh, Bruce Cabot's character. Yeah, yeah we're getting all, yeah, we're this getting guy literally involved. just got thrown into this movie. Like, I think I honestly think this movie would have been better without a love interest. Until yeah, I didn't. I don't like. He, he didn't add most, that much. He he was a horribly written character. He he like but he, he had one of the funniest lines in the. He whole had one of the funniest lines like for, like and, and he oh, also sailor. He also served as like a uh, like the the way to get. Uh, and out of danger, you know, like yeah. in many situations, like like he's he's basically like a tool, and it, I'm 
I'm okay with that. I, like he I, serves I, a purpose to the he plot. Does, like but literally, it's, just, I would not believe Carl would be able to do those things. I, right? I, I like, was just gonna say make Carl do those things. I, like, I, don't, I, mean, I that's, that's that's, that's, that's like making him like all like like now he's charismatic and a super like. like if he's gonna be that charismatic, like he's a bit of a geek, I think is That's what makes true. him kind of enjoyable. Yeah, he's not right? very like, he's, he's not, not like a cool. He's a very like charismatic geek. Like yeah, I mean, and that, that's probably why like Anne to some extent doesn't feel as threatened by him as she would like. You know, she knows he's uh, someone he's else. Very obviously, like I'm a film director. I love my job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that. That's that's basically. Like, I, I think through that talks. lens, I like I'm I'm fine with what's his name. I don't Jack. know. His, I can't remember his name. It's Jack. Jack. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, Jack. Yeah, he's he's whatever you know. He he's... has one of the best lines. Um, basically, like he he has this whole thing where he like since there's a woman on the ship. And oh yeah, he's, he's, like, he doesn't like he's just like he doesn't like women. Like, and then there's a later thing uh, where it's just like say. I think I love you. <laughs> After knowing this woman for a voyage, <laughs> you want to know something funny? That actually. And then she I follows it up with. You. He delivers it in the most <laughs> mock. The most monotone, like, like yeah, no break. I am not me. an actor. <laughs> and you know that she follows up with you. a, but Jack, you hate women. <laughs> uh, do you know that exact same thing happens in another movie? What movie? Bride of the Gorilla. Oh my gosh. Does it? <laughs> Except uh, um, Jack in this movie is uh, Raymond Burr. And Raymond Burr, if you don't know, is flaming homosexual. <laughs> and, uh, was he? <laughs> oh, was he? Yes, he was. Yeah, he was, and he was phenomenal. He was amazing. He's in some one of my favorite movies of all time, King of the Monsters. Yes, he's again one of my favorite protagonists. <laughs> <laughs> Just the trolling. most. He's no. He's you're, the you're most. Meaning really hard. He's right the now. most stoic. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I, I love Steve Martin. Steve, yeah, Steve fucking Martin. Yeah. Martin. Smoking tobacco like nobody's business. Every scene. <laughs> Can you imagine if uh, if if like King Kong Guess what had, had Steve Martin in it? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and he was like interrupting the bit. Like like he was on the boat with them and stuff. And he like as they're we approached uh, the the native tribesmen. <laughs> like like he, yeah, it'd so, be awful. <laughs> let, let's get to let's just get to the Muta story. They get to the island, and I'd like to point out that Carl is going to this island and knows there's a fucking giant monkey oh, yeah. here. He's not It's not ever really he like, knows. He just has heard some stories. Because they have a scene about. on the boat where they're just like, Skipper, have you heard of Kong? <laughs> and we all we like chills. Yeah. We got quiet goosebumps and we're just like, oh shit. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's deli- it's it's, it's kind of goofy though, isn't it? Like, it's really goofy, it's, but it's like it's delivered in like it's delivered by Robert. Every, the be- I think the best way to describe like so much of this movie just has this. It, it's like corny, but it works. Yeah, like like, I, like I, it's one of the things that I enjoy about it is just corn. how much I go. This shouldn't be making me so giddy right now, but corn it is. Corn and cheese is- and schlock work in doses and in very specific situations. It's just spliced perfectly where yeah. it doesn't. It still feels like a masterpiece. It it it's like it's like a perfect four cheese pizza or something. Just... So they get to the island, right? Uh, when they get to, they see a whole bunch of tribes people. They start setting up camp and equipment on the beach. Uh, they start. And they're f- having a, 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 a sacrifice, right? Yeah, like, that's what they're doing like a when human they get sacrifice there. for calm. Yeah. Yes, and they don't really realize that at first until they see it, and then I'm. Fairly sure the human sacrifice was the one in blackface, which is and, and it's women specifically, yeah, and that's yeah. probably why. Um, I don't remember very well. To be honest, yeah. but. See, see, like it's it's probably the like, the slowest part of the movie. The parts yeah. I don't care about are like just the parts on the island and stuff yeah, and until Kong shows up. Yeah, of course, and they're building um, a little bit up to Kong with some of the noises and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, you know. And then they get to the point where they're staying out on the boat, and then they come and they capture. They're staying like right next to the island. Yeah, right. And, like, they're, and they come, and the, island, the tribes people come, and they capture Fei Ray, and they tie her up, and she gets you know sacrificed to Kong. And then Jack and and Carl they rush, and they, a whole bunch of the crew rush to go get them. They start stalking and like loading weapons guns and stuff. And stuff yeah. Really, actually, kind of funny scene because uh, it's like if, when if people, it was if it was one guy like a guy like one of the crew. Which my Carl Denham just rips his shirt off and he's like ripped and he just bursts no, in. He's like the, the no, he's like the Iceman from if the it was, If it was one of the men of the crew, like, that was captured by the tribes people for whatever reason. They would have just gone, like, okay, we're well, getting the hell well, we out lost of here. Him, yeah. <laughs> we're going. <laughs> but, 
Oh, no. Absolutely right. Yeah. A woman got captured. Yeah. Go get her. Everybody, well, they were all, they all wanted her. Everybody so wanted her. So I guess, I guess the tribe, like, it's like the more beautiful you are, the, like, the better, basically, the, the better Kong will treat us. So, like, it's just a bunch of really fucking ugly this women in this tribe. This everybody. Be breeded, everybody. Breeded to be ugly, basically. Pretty much. They haven't seen a beautiful woman in years. So, Fei Ray showing up is, like, probably like seeing an actual literal, like, religious angel to them. Yeah. Like not a literal religious angel movie, because that would just be like eyes and, and energy all over the place. But <laughs> so. this, this first movie, or the, the Kong is how everybody loves Fay Ray's character in mm-hmm. Nero. The next movie is how everybody fucking hates Carl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we'll get to that in just a second. But, yeah, we keep so, planting the seeds. Let's finish Kong. Soon. So Kong grabs a, a Miss Fay and takes her up to the a really cool shot of them on a cliff edge, right? And he's, he's looking at her and, like, touching her and stuff. And not, not he's not really, treating her bad. He's no, treating not her like all. a gentleman. Yeah, like a gentleman. Both treat him like a gentleman. Just Ironically, different ways. even the, the bestial, like, yeah. side yeah. of man that we discussed. Just different ways of doing it, you know? Courtship, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and see, in my opinion, this is a little off topic. The ideal man to be is a combination of both. Well, of course. Yeah. So... He's you know being real nice to her, and there's a there's some uh, some fighting, oh, there's some cha- uh, chasing scenes with a stegosaurus chasing him to the woods, and then getting a guy getting eaten. There's out of a bunch tree. of dinosaurs. And yeah, shit. It's yeah, they just awesome. some really good stuff through through here. And then um, there gets a scene where they're crawling across a log, and King Kong comes and shakes them all. Oh, off. that's that's like brutal. It's it's horrifying. It's horrifying it's, for 1930. Like what the. It's not just that? them falling off a log. It's them landing in a pit. I mean, it's like at every single individual person that falls off the log, we get to see them land on the hard canyon ground. And like they, they're like screaming. And the second yeah. they hit the ground, they cut the audio. It's ah! unbelievable. And, and the worst part is that that wasn't supposed to be how it ended. No. They weren't. They didn't die. They fell down there and they got torn to shreds by spider monsters. Oh, Jesus and then, Christ! Uh, and then Marion Coop, Mr. Cooper, he uh, he said, uh, "I don't want that in there. It stops the narrative of the story." It does. That would add, that'd be a, like it's already like a, a scene where we went, "Oh, like yeah. Christ!" Like if you added that, that would just be like overkill. You know, like but, you, you just like. It, 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 you, you know, this is just too like yeah, it's like trying to be edgy or something. Peter, yeah, P- uh, Peter, uh, Peter Jackson didn't feel the same way. He he remade it, which props to him, respect to him. You know, I, I can see myself doing shit. Yeah, like that. So, I can I can see why he wanted to do it. Well, but the, the thing is, the footage is gone. Yeah, yes, yeah. it's, it's they it's, it's burned gone. it. It's it, there's no if it survives anywhere, it's probably one of the single most. Uh, that would be the most expensive film role, probably. Absolutely, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. It has obsessed people like. Yeah. To the point that Jackson was just like, I need it. No, I would, I would kill to see the original, I mean, without a doubt. Um, anyway. Yeah, I'm fine never seeing it. I, I completely agree with Cooper. I, he's right. Yeah, that's, I, I think taking it out of the movie, I think I just want to see it. That's, it's out of context. Just, I don't mind, like. It. I don't mind violence in a movie, but I think it's just like when I'm you're gonna... like adding overkill and slowing shit down. I, I like. I almost literally do get offended. I'm like, you're just trying to fucking like gross not, me out. Like, fucking move on. It's like, not about that. It's about I know the, it's not about that. The technical aspect. I just want to know what it looks. You want to like. say, okay, okay, that makes sense. That's yeah, what, like what the, what the spiders and shit. Yes, would have been. I just, and like how it would look. Them. I just, I'm a story just, that would that the would have only, fucked it up. The like, only footage of it that we have is I think uh, Willis O'Brien used a scene and one of the monsters for another film uh-huh. later on but yeah. I don't know what it is to be honest but you can look it up <laughs> shakes them off the log they hit the pit I was horrified when yeah. I first saw it it was violent that was yeah. the like just, it's just another moment in the movie where I was like I was like this movie like, another moment where I just, just like zip back and this movie's gripping the fuck out of me like it's taking me in all these different like pulls and, and emotions I can't believe yeah. this like and then what happens is they bring they go back through the, the giant wall that they built to protect them from Kong. <laughs> Kong just breaks it down, right? Yeah. And they have like they, they put them in like a pit, you know, and then they put them on a boat. And then Carl, yeah, Carl Denham says, sometime during this entire plot, I think it would be a great idea for me to take a giant gorilla back to New York with our current technology. Um, that's just him. I, that's a very stupid decision. He it's gets his, another mad scientist. He gets insane. Carl Denham, like he gets his come down uh, later on, ten months later on. <laughs> sure. um, he uh, he thinks this is a a brilliant idea. So they put him on the boat, 
and they put him in a, a, a well, I guess, on the boat, or they just chained him, you know, because it's just a big empty space that they had, I guess. You don't really get to see much of that um, at all. And then you see him in chains, like, crucified, <laughs> and he's just... He's just up there, and, and then Faye, they put Faye Ray up there in front of him. I mean, it's tied like up. they're just trying to like yeah, it's drive so, him insane. Like, and then people start taking pictures, and then he just goes nuts and just breaks the chains off, uh, like uh, the Romans threatened and told Jesus to try and do while he was on the cross. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. That'd be uh, awful. <laughs> tearing your fucking tendons and shit. No, that's Jesus. I mean. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> stick your finger. <laughs> anyway, keep going. <laughs> that actually happened. To the devils with fun. Anyway, King, so King Kong, right? King Kong, as, as King Kong escapes, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? We jumps forward. Right King Kong escapes and grabs Fei Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Not, I mean, at some point, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> takes her up to the takes her up the Empire State Building, <laughs> and kind of kind of sets her down a little bit up there because there's like a tiny little space for yeah, us, yeah, which would be terrifying. Oh yeah, God, yeah, I would be shitting my pants. Dress up. I get technically. Uh, <laughs> I still wear dress in that situation. <laughs> yeah, that might be the move, and you get a good draft. But like, anyway, um, the old geezer got shot at the end of it, and uh, <laughs> he, falls, he falls down. He falls. He falls down. In they the, fucking kill him, dude. <laughs> like, they shoot. They gun him down with, with jet they planes. Send in bike planes and just <laughs> riddle him with bullets. Yep, it's and really then tragic. he like, but he like holds his arm. He like holds his heart and looks at his hand and just like falls. Yeah. Like, it's like it's sad. His it's really heart, sad. Like his heart that gets replaced in 1986. <laughs> but um, we'll get there. Thanks, get thanks there. for trying to take the impact away from that moment. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> anyway, Jesus these these uh, these uh, these planes killed Kong, and then. I guess Carl Denham ref- didn't see that. And he tries, it, it tries to just pretend the responsibility is oh, on him. He was too busy, like he was too busy looking wife. down. I guess, and then <laughs> I guess he th- figured Fay Ray shot him or something. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you know, <laughs> I mean, beauty killed the beast. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He, she fucking like shot him in the head. That's my that's my uh, presupposition. <laughs> she's like she's like ah, call an ambulance. Uh, not for me. <laughs> Thirty six times <laughs> fa- falls all the way down with him, and like Kong breaks her fall. She like bounces off, boing. <laughs> on Carl his, catches uh, him. Yeah, she bounces off and into his uh, into his arms. <laughs> and that's how it should have ended. <laughs> that's exactly that would have been. That would have made this like a, a 15 out of 10 yeah. movie. Like, oh my god. <laughs> and then you get the you get the you get the fucking line. Carl lights his pipe, takes a pipe a fat fucking drag, puffs it out. <sighs> Twas beauty that killed the beast. <laughs> Movie's over. The end. King Kong. <laughs> um six months later in real life. Yeah. Um Ten months later in the story, like I told Chris the other day, I said, "So this this movie takes place in the not too distant future." Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a dystopian a, it's, novel, if you will. It's a dystopian movie, which yeah. is mind boggling. <laughs> <laughs> this is the third film in yeah. the in the Kong trilogy. It, um, <laughs> some scenes take place in the non-existent future city of Dekang. Uh, <laughs> But we'll get to that. So, so do, Tim, hey, some context, real quick. Yeah. We're we're looking at Son of Kong, correct? Son yes. of Kong, <laughs> Son of Kong, the sequel that came out six months later, that takes place ten months later after King Kong. So, so let's 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 discuss so, that for a second, right? Like, so movies being rushed into production, in particular, you know, about six months or so, seems to be like a common window frame for sequels like that. Usually spells fucking disaster. Uh, can anybody say Gigantus the Fire Monster? Uh, Godzilla Raids again. Yes. Yeah. Which, if you, you love that, I know you love that movie. But I, I try I to look at things objectively. Bores the hell out of me. Absolutely. I try. I watch that by myself, like in God. And, if, and, and, and and you can look at it by itself, but if you're comparing it to Fifty Four, you cannot. Oh. You cannot. Uh, uh, 
We'll you save cannot. that for another goddamn day. Yeah, 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 or, yeah Godzilla Ooh. will be a probably several episode series going on. Yes. But, um, <laughs> basically, um, so so it, it, you, you hear this and you go, well, Christ, Son of Kong is going to be a fucking disaster. But in like the most meta genius decision I've like ever heard of in my life, this movie is not the same genre as, as the first King Kong. The only all. characteristic they share is that they're both adventurous. So the it's first, a the first completely movie. different style. Of yes. compl- like it takes, it's like a different tone, and mm. it all it works. <laughs> yes. So taking aside the the gorilla, the creature aspect, the first one is an adventure horror thriller, and the second one is an adventure comedy. It's like full on comedy, like unbelievable. This is literally like one of the like. I was laughing my ass off at this. So this is one of the funniest things I've ever watched. We open on a hotel room. Um, <laughs> Mr. Carl Denham. I'd like to point out that Jack's like laying on the couch, like he's in a like therapist. This is a therapist. Office. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, he needs to unload. <laughs> it's been a long day. Uh, <laughs> long night. Uh, I was making night moves, but anyway. <laughs> we can cut that out. No, we're good. Let's go. We cut open on a hotel room. Um, Mr. Carl Denham is pacing back and forth in what appears to be a panic at first, right? That was my first assumption, which was correct. Uh, you get a knock at the door, and it's this uh, woman with these really big, fluffy arm things, which is a, a 20s. Uh, like flappy like flappers hat. yeah it was one of those things and she's trying to ask him questions and she pretends to be somebody else at first and then she's actually a reporter trying to get to him uh, because guess what he fucked up I fuck, <laughs> uh, he uh, fucked it tur- up it turns out that his his little funny quip at the end didn't uh like relieve him of his responsibility of, of what he just did to the city of New York. Yes. No, because he is facing 11 indictments, uh, one of them by the Supreme Court of the United States of America, and also five personal assaults, I believe. Four, I think. Um, so this guy soon is to be being, five. Yeah, soon to be five. <laughs> Uh, soon to be seven. It's Chris and I ain't getting him out of this one, right? No, like it's a completely different like situation for his character to and, be and in. And now no one, no one's but, taking his shit at all, and it puts him in a completely different. The light. character is he, the characters are written exactly the same. They are. That's that's. It's just a completely important. different situation. Yeah, it's the same guy playing and the same characters, like actors and everything. Yeah, right? which is yeah, it's. Good. Faye Ray's not in it. Correct. And Marion C. Cooper, and the reason she's not in it is because she said only the original Kong is king, which. Respect, respect of the course. fuck out of that, and and considering what Sun Kong was, she would not have worked in this. No, absolutely. Helen Helen Mack worked fine. Yeah, she was. She, was she yeah, no, she was fine. She wasn't, and she's still gorgeous. Absolutely, she's very beautiful, and I, I, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's not, it didn't it wasn't it wasn't like one of the things that you really just go oh at when you see it. Though. Yeah, no, no, there's yeah, a yeah. lot going on in this. Film. There's a, there's like too many things to like like like. So there's no build up to her or anything like because no. because she's not Fay Ray. Not right? at all. And so here's what here's what we get, right? He's he has to sneak out of his apartment and overalls over his suit in a giant bucket on his head. Right? <laughs> Which yep. is unbelievable to see Carl Denham do. It's it, he just gets more and more likable. Yes. I, I don't know how the fuck he does watching him <laughs> and then, just crumble before. Yeah. It's your eyes. Oh, it's amazing. He right? goes to the uh the captain of the ship that was in the first <laughs> the one. Skipper. Yeah, the skipper. Uh <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> That's my favorite scene. He's a wealthy one of my favorite like, scenes. Like in terms of just character interactions, it's so great. So here's yeah. what we get, right? He goes, they're on the boat and they're talking and he's telling them everything that happened to him and he's and this guy's like, oh, I know. Here's the thing. We got to get out of here because I'm going to be implied in this. And Carl Denham's like, yeah, you're right. You're right. I still so technically they, own this, this boat, boat until I, they take it. So exactly. let's go. So we we can just skip town real quick. So they go to get the fuck out of here. They, they, they to, literally just fucking let's fucking. They go, go to Bongo, um, <laughs> Singapore, which is a, the only real place. <laughs> <laughs> and the Kang, the Kang. Long back was yeah. my favorite. Oh yeah, long back. <laughs> long back. What yeah. the hell is that? They go to. Uh, we gotta find out. Taking a taking a right. taking a page from Gagi, just yeah. making shit up, it's, and they're like, no, no, they'll probably just believe it's real. Yeah. And I really hope these aren't real, please. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and we're just like mocking them. They, they're all landlocked, and we're like, wait a minute. Yeah, Singapore, you know, that's nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. they get to decay. The first thing, the first thing they uh, Carl Denham wants to do when he gets there, after lighting his pipe, is because he smokes actually in every scene. He's constantly smoking in his which, like, which is a really funny touch. Yeah, but that's, he wasn't. He never did in the first one while he was filming because he he's focused. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's, he's high, right? Exactly. Like, he adds to the character, and now he's like, "Gotta take a drag." Every yeah. So, and here's and here's the first thing they do. He they both walk up and they see a poster and they say, "Oh, there's a show tonight." And the skipper's like, "Oh, no, I just want to go get a drink and get something to eat." And then he's like, "Oh, we can drink at the show. We gotta see it." And then, and then one of my favorite lines, which I think you guys might have glanced over, this conver- I love this conversation. The skipper goes, well, why, why do we even need to see that? Goes, because it's a show. It's here. It exists. We need to go. They put it up. And it's just like the most... That's Carl's line, right? Yes. Yeah, of it's, course. It's just the most raw, like, yeah, it exists. We need to go see. Now, honestly, it. Like, I appreciate the living hell was, out of that line. It's it was, like, it was, as a person who requires, just go, there's no to go what, to shows as an artist. For my yeah, life. it's like it's like, like it's like you got the skippers basically saying, "Why, why have art?" And mm-hmm. Denim's like, "What uh, the fuck?" It, you know, because it's here. Because you, do you, you want to be bored for the rest yeah, of your life? You you know, fine, let's just go sit in a fucking hotel yeah, room. Like, like we're literally trying to. The rest of the movie, lives. the rest of the movie is just them playing like like cards. We are probably the two most wanted men in all of New York City right now. And we are living our lives on the lamb. Yeah. And you don't want to go see a show. And by the way, the show. Like he's still got a lot of money, I'm sure. Yeah, no, he's yeah, got the monkeys money. were playing at the show, I think. Too, yeah, right? yeah, the monkeys. <laughs> yeah, the monkeys. The monkeys. <laughs> Great band. They don't compare it to the animals. But <laughs> or Kongs or Jira. <laughs> I, when you say the animals, I think of just like 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 a Disney ass, like nineteen forties, like in the barn with the haystacks, like like one of them's playing the fiddle, one of, one of, one of them's like got a little like two House of the Rising like, Sun. Like, yeah. <laughs> Not their original song, I know, but nobody knows. Who of, it is. Yeah, but they, there's the actual monkeys are playing music, right? Capuchins. There's a there's a standing. He's got one of them's got the EB one, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's. Uh, I think you made the joke. Oh, look, it's Mountain. Yes, it's Felix, yeah. Leslie over there. Yeah. And they got a they got a front man, you know, do, do put it on the show, give him the performance, you know, it's, like it's uh, Richard Ashcroft or Joe Cocker, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh-huh. then you got the you got the uh, what was it? You got the drum player. And one of them had like a, a was it? I, for, I don't know what kind. Yeah, it was of like drum it was like was. a marching band bass drum where yeah. you hit it on the sides. <laughs> and then I think the other one had like sim- it had cymbals. Yeah. And like the monkey, to, like literally the monkey. Yeah. Really, yeah. And the, that show ends, and uh, and everybody's clapping, everybody loves it. And then Helen Matt comes out in a hula skirt and stuff, and she sings in the tiny Tim voice, you know, the high of the high pitch, a lot of a broad. Like completely different from yeah. uh, from Fay Ray's Just intro, but like, like out. for this movie, it works. Yeah. It's like it's a comedy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's you compared it to Betty Boop, which is a very fair assessment. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. You compared it, yes, correct, correct, correct. Like who the hell is this Betty yes. Boop character? Yeah. And I, that's a that's a very very fair assessment, especially for the role. I mean, she, she probably was like yeah. like designer. I mean, they, she was she was basically called her kid, you know. And that, that was what like, they like her. like what, like X Pac like yeah like basically. Sean Waltman. And they they told her to shut up and sit down and lay down and go down the stairs. It's just it's funny in context, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's. It's such. A, it's such a. She's like a really like. Kind of, she's kind of like klutzier, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, she she's like. Kind, not like a dimwit. No, 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 she's not like dimwit. But she's again, like, it's like comparing her to Fay Ray. Like, like these, a, yeah, all of this is comparing the the second movie to the first one. Yeah, like, she's just like a goofball. Of anything, course, yeah. which and it works for the movie. And basically, after the show ends, after she's done singing, the uh, only person clapping is Charlie, <laughs> uh, which is really funny. And then. Carl that's like a, that's a really cute touch, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then she starts well, he playing. Loves it. It's, yeah, it's, it's so sweet. I love him. Yeah. And then Carl and the skipper leave, and then everybody follow them out, and she while she's playing. Uh, <laughs> it cuts to <laughs> night. It was it was it was a really fucking funny shot. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> sorry, go on. Cut. It cuts to night, right? And basically, the um, not the skipper, but the guy who sold. Uh, um, Carl Dunham, the map to King uh, to Skull Island, uh, was, was there. He was on the yeah. decaying. 
and he was drinking with the father of Miss Helen or Kid. I'm just going to call her Miss Helen. Um, and he and they end up getting in an argument. He smashes a bottle over his head, knocks over a lamp, and everything catches fire. Well, kills the, the father, yeah, just, right? Yeah, he's that, dead. That, that bottle shot kills him. <laughs> Not instantly. Uh, oh, okay. Got you. Uh, I, th- I thought it did. Sorry, I, I was yeah. also watching this movie with a bunch of people talking oh, yeah, and course, a farting dog. So That's, like, <laughs> there were little bits I missed here and there. Very true. Unfortunately. <laughs> so you get this shot of Helen coming in and, and dragging him out after the guy leaves. And basically, in his final words, he's like, yeah, the I forget his name. Uh, this guy did it. Uh, it was like, it started with a D. I forget. Dickhead. Yeah, we'll dickhead. Call we'll call him dickhead. dickhead. Yeah. yeah. Dickhead kills him. And then she confronts him about it like two minutes hey, later dickhead, you killed he's my like hey father. dickhead <laughs> to die. i know you I, he's like hey dickhead i know you killed my father like last night and then he goes how did you know you weren't there and she goes how would you know if you were if you were there and then that's that's what you get from that right <laughs> and then he and then they both get on the boat with carl and a whole bunch of other people that yeah, he just that's found the part that i just don't get so she hangs out willingly with the dude that just literally murdered her father yes well, it's, you're not, i don't think she's like hanging out willingly it's more so like she wants, they all well like they get on the boat because they got like their why did they get on the boat again? <laughs> exactly so here's what ha- okay so here's what here's what happened yeah, I mean, like I, I, this isn't me shitting on the movie like again this is something i probably just missed yeah but. no problem actually most likely during this time because this all happens relatively in a, in a quick area it, so, it does this part moves real quick yeah. yeah so you get uh they get done carl talks to her and he's like and she's he's like yeah i want you to come along you know uh i want you to and they're just running from country to country. Yeah, they're, 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 they're so, just like, taking people along with them. You don't get to see him pick off. He's getting like he's just getting like this party boat. And he's yeah. just like running around. Like, Pretty much. And and awesome. He gets a crew, and only the crew works on. Obviously, Carl Denham doesn't work on the boat, and we'll get to that later. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so you get a shot of all of them getting on on the boat because uh, you get this uh, you get this scene where Carl's talking to the skipper. He was like, "Hey." How far is uh, Skull Island from here? <laughs> and then the skipper goes, "Well, no. Well, about Carl, 753, 1753 miles." And then my exact same reaction Carl has as well. He goes, "Huh? <laughs> How do you know that?" <laughs> He's like, "Well, I um looking at the map last night, you know, just <laughs> Plotting out, testing, to see how far it was. You know, you never know. <laughs> just imagine a truck skipper just ah, just been on to King. Hey, let's go back here. You know, I miss that place. Uh, ah, let's go back here. You know, it's just it's like it's piss fucking wasted, right? It's like it's like Vietnam. That's he come home is like all they know is how to kill people. So Except like, this guy's looking at the maps instead, you know. <laughs> and, and, and if you thought the white men brought hell to Skull Island the first time, just fucking wait. Oh like, my god! So I, it's it's hilarious. So they're on their way to Skull Island. They get there, right? And then this guy goes to get Carl out of the office with his hand behind his back. He comes in there and he's like, hey, Skipper, need you on the deck. And then they go out there and the first thing you see when Carl steps out and he's like on the on the top deck, it just like 20 people with guns <laughs> pointed at Helen, the Skipper, and the guy who killed his father. Like not, that's, that's, father. that was like funnier that there wasn't like someone immediately yeah. like at him. It and was then, like, he sees all of his like friends. Yeah. Immediately after that shot, you get the guy pulling the gun on yeah, Carl. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was, the guy, that was the guy who killed Helen's father. Yes. So. But they throw him overboard anyway with them, yeah, which yeah, is the plan. Yeah. They, so basically they the tell him to get the well, like the, the, the main crew of, of Carl, the skipper, yes. and Helen. Like, they, all they, figured, yeah. they all eventually figured out from Dickhead that um, everybody on Carl's last crew, except dead. the people that are on this crew, are all dead. Yeah. Completely. They, they were eviscerated by the island and its nature, and that's just... Part of the part Horrifying. of the fine, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> part it's all part of it, you know. And then you get to uh, the, he walks down there. He's like, "Oh, what's all this?" And he's like, "Ah, you work us to death. Where you don't pay living wages, you know." And I was like, "You're living on the boat. So I don't know what you're paying to live." You know? <laughs> anyway, um, they're they're mad at him, and they're basically forming a union. Now, wait, I find out that I'm wanted in the United States. Yeah, <laughs> and then they basically bring up, "Oh yeah, by the way, we figured out everyone on your last crew died. Get the fuck out on the lifeboat." And the only person not present. Is Charlie, and when I first saw that, I was worried because everyone on that Thought boat. They killed him. Well, it just because of the racial connotation back then, I almost figured they did. Just, 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 just I assumed the worst possible 
outcome. He's, he's, I, the, I almost said he's sneakier than that. I don't think I, I that's he, kind of offensive. Well, he's, he's smarter than that. He like. is smarter than that because here's what happens. They tell him to get over, right? After um, Helen tells Carl that the guy killed her father and he's like, ah, why didn't you do that? And then they just throw him overboard separately. But they get down to the lifeboat, the lifeboat. Yeah, and Charlie's there already him, yeah. there. And he goes, Charlie, what are you doing here? And he goes, I don't like those guys. I don't like those guys. I don't like those guys. They're mean. I like you. I'm going to stick with you. And it's just your like, fucking heart. And you're, just, like, you're like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> he's such a good a homie. guy. Absolutely. He's one of the he's one of the people that actually survives the movie. We'll get to that. Um, so they uh, they abandoned them. They rode ashore in their little dinky lifeboat. And then guess who's standing there fucking waiting for him? The same same tribes people <laughs> from the last movie. And they are pissed at him because he oh, tore really? because Every, he tore only down him his, too right like, yes. like they don't they leave everyone else alone no, like, only him because he tore down their wall and he was they were so fucking pissed that they were the first thing that they do before you even see them you see a spear land right in front of him <laughs> and then he just freezes in his tracks and then the skipper somehow translate the uh, translates the island language which is still confusing to me and then they sail to a different part of the island because they figured oh we're, we're not going to run into these guys again right first thing they do when they land is they see a little little white gorilla that they dub little kong well and, I, i've run into every possible like like burned bridge that i could run into like, I mean, yep. who, what, 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 which other one could I possibly? Oh, the son of the guy I yeah. murdered. And so here's, and so here's how they find him. He's stuck in mud or quicksand. Yeah, yeah. And they push a tree almost on top of him, <laughs> and he climbs out. And then he thanks them. And what happens is, you get it, it cuts to immediately after he he thanks them. He gets like like a splinter. After right after that. It, it kind of cuts away from that scene. You see the rest, like some of the other people that came uh, on the island, they get like trapped by a rhinoceros because they heard there was treasure on the and island. And that's, that's, uh, which characters? Uh, that's, that's the, the guy. No, it's not, it's not the, uh, yeah, it's the skipper, the guy who killed, uh, the father. No, dickhead and, yeah, and, and then, Charlie. Uh, Charlie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so they've got one gun. They're like stuck Carl in a cave and while, so yeah. like, like, and they can't get out because there's yeah. a triceratops yeah. trying to get And it. each group only has one gun. Like, exactly. Yes. So. And except for not any, yeah, because the triceratops takes. Oh, yeah. They, they um, lose their gun. Yeah. They lose their gun. Mm -hmm. And um, they're, um, all, of, all of this is happening. And then it cuts to uh, back Carl. To Carl back to Carl and, and the gorilla. And, and he's, he's, he, he has a splinter. In his hand, right? <laughs> and Carl says, "Give Let me, me take get, care of that." <laughs> he says, "Give me some of your cut dress. off part of your dress." And she <laughs> just and she okay, and just rips she it. Off. it. She, she must have superhuman fucking strength yeah. to be able to just do that. Like, and it's Carl, not easy. Like, Carl's sitting there taping this guy up, and he's like, uh, "Hey, I gotta tell you something." <laughs> he starts <laughs> telling a story to to Baby Kong. <laughs> what does he say? He says, "Well." I came here a couple months back, and I met your old pop. <laughs> and uh, well, I, I took him to New York, and I, 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 I chained him up, and they took pictures of him, and he freaked out and climbed a tower. And well, the old geezer was shot at the end of it. I'm real sorry, pal. And then walks away. <laughs> and then, and then you just see the shot of Kong, little Kong. He's just, uh -huh, he uh -huh. doesn't. Yeah, he's just, like, just blank faced. What? He it's, just, it's, he just fucking like just. Hey, I killed your dad. Is one of the funniest things I have ever seen. I, I mean, this whole bit, I was like, it was killing me. Yeah. I was, I was like, I hurting. Like, yeah. hadn't laughed that hard since fucking Inframan. I'm not even joking. It goes back to the other guys, and then they get out of the cave, and because they camp out like during nighttime. And there's a scene where they're camping, and Little Kong like peeks behind the corner and he's just like looking at him. Them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's watching how this guy treats. But well, yeah, the there's the, how does. Little Kong like speak. He sounds like Homer Simpson. He talks like the Kong version of Homer Simpson. <laughs> he talks like Andre the Giant. Almost <laughs> 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 like, that was my. It's like Andre the Giant and Minya put together. <laughs> they just, if you could exactly. fuse their voices into one thing. Yes. Like, <laughs> so. You, they they start walking up right because the treasure the, the treasure of the island is behind this wall this stone wall that was built and they say how do you think this wall got here 
And then Carl, the genius he is, says, well, by the people who built it. Which is, which is an immaculate line, godly line. And then yes. he's, and then they start coming. He Kong starts coming up to him and he's like starts making noises. And then he's like, and then, he, and then he's like, get out of here, you big dummy. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, what? You just apologized for killing his dad. And you're calling him a big dummy. <laughs> and then. This, this is why your dad got shot. This is why your dad got shot. <laughs> Should be less like your father. Anyway, this bear comes out of the woods. What? <laughs> Giant bear. A bear that is twice the size of Little Kong. Huge. Little Kong, which is an albino ape, by the way. Not like actual like al- albinism, just white and without the red. Pe- we, we can't actually tell. It's black and white. Anyway, so this bear comes out and... Carl and Helen are just kind of, kind of standing on the hill watching all this go down, and they're I've just spe- they're like Varen and and Manda just exactly. spectating. Like. <laughs> and they, and what's happening is Kong's climbing up the hill, and the bear just comes out and drags him down <laughs> and starts clawing at him. It is like throwing punches and kicking the shit out of little Kong. And little Kong is like Kurt Angle, like pulling, like holds on him and taking he him liter- to the ground. He literally looks, at one point you said he looks like bald Kurt Angle, yes. like from the back, and I it's, agree. Like, it's unbelievable. There's a scene where he puts him in a headlock and punches him like 20 times. It, it, it's do, 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 amazing. Do, 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 do. And then the bear breaks out of it and smacks him down and he hits his head. And then there's this scene where like he's like he's kids like baby. He's like, he's like, he's like, 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 like eyes. It's like, like it's played for laughs. <laughs> and then he gets up and he I think that was the moment I think with it just like I it finally like dawned on me. I was like, this whole movie's just taking the piss. Yeah, like, like this but is genius. It, I, I, it gets better. Okay. <laughs> because Kong like pushes the bear down and like double fist is just beating his face into the ground. And then he stands up because he thinks he's won and he looks at Helen and he gestures towards him and starts raising it, his eyebrows and going, This was mm-hmm. the funniest moment mm-hmm. in the movie. This mm-hmm. this is where I couldn't breathe. Was his little like, like trying to communicate <laughs> with them. <And> he's, <laughs> he's like, I like, killed Ooh. the bear. He's oh. like the shot it, it's like framed perfectly. Yes. Like his 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 facial expression is like Because like, it's a POV shot the, of the the the, the 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 stupid little like like <laughs> like how yeah. he points at it. You like, see what I did? There? Looking at him like, <laughs> like, 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 like he thinks they're gonna do anything. Like. And then the bear gets up. It's not over. And then he just starts pummeling him. And then Kong, he, Kong puts him in the hold again and tries putting him in a headlock. But the bear gets out of it before he can punch him. And then Kong gets like two good hits. And then he crawls underneath the bear. And then he sees this giant like tree limb on the ground. And then just turns around and right over the Bonk. head, and just like, boom, smash, smacks the tree. And then two more times, just boom, boom, and then the gear and the bear runs away. And he just throws the log down, and then he just sits there. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gets up, and he goes and he breaks the wall down, right. And then there's the treasure of the island. Star! It's it's a it's a sphinx inside of a cave, but the sphinx isn't the treasure. It's the diamonds that are up on a top like brick wall the jewels, in front yeah. of the sphinx, right? And the jewels are in this necklace thing. And then Carl Denham gets Kong to pull it down, and immediately after, um, this uh, stegos smaller stegosaurus kind of comes in, and then he Kong just tears him to shreds. <laughs> just he breaks his neck, and then just punches yeah, he's his the face. Fuck out of this one, one yeah easy fight like the bear was tough but like this was it was this was no problem and mind you this is a baby okay <laughs> just that's how powerful this species is <laughs> the kongs yeah and then immediately once they get the treasure everything goes to shit uh like whole island starts coming apart it's reverse inframan as one i've one of us said <laughs> and the whole like everything is just sinking into the ground which is probably like the Indiana Jones thing like they grab the treasure mm-hmm. and that that's my that's where I think they, that's probably right. now now was there a bit where he said something like or rich. like like they made up someone said they made the treasure up when they told him about it yeah, oh, but, yeah. yes, right? yes, yes like, the, like that the was the guy who told so right he, he he just like like this treasure wasn't supposed so, to even be found like so here's what happens they leave the cave and then they meet up with the skipper, Charlie, yeah, yeah. and they're on David. Yeah. Dickhead. And then and Dickhead. Dickhead. And Dickhead goes, 
Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I made the treasure up. I didn't mean to get all get mixed into all of this. And he's like, and then and, and Carl's like, huh? There's just, just, a, just like a scene where Carl just like looks at the guy, looks at his hand with the diamonds in it, and it just the disappears. Guy again, just like, and like, like, and it fades like, like, like twenty se- like twenty seconds of him looking back and forth. Like yeah, that like, would have been me. What? Amazing. <laughs> and so the and then immediately once the island starts sh- uh, shrinking dickhead goes over to this body of water and out comes this sea serpent that looks amazing it is th- in my the best willis o'brien model because it was a, a close up it had a shot. lot that close up was it it's just it's it looked, very detailed it was immaculate and it eats dickhead and that was when we were cheering we're like yeah let's go and then they all get in the lifeboat except for Carl. Carl and Little Kong. <laughs> and as Helen... Uh, now, 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 keep well, in mind, the entire island, island is sinking into the into the ocean, so a la, like, sea monster. Here, here's what you get. A giant storm, and they're just traversing the waters, Helen, Charlie, and the skipper. And then you see, from a distance, uh, Charlie and Little Kong trying to climb what's left of the mountain, of, of the, like, the island the that's still above yeah, the sea. Yeah, he's hot with the islanders, then like and now Carl now. Yeah. Uh, well, he doesn't have to worry about it. Yeah, he's yeah, got nothing true. to worry about now. Yeah. Like, he's uh, he's fighting for his life. fucking natives. <laughs> he, gets stuck on the, yeah. he gets stuck on the side of the mountain. And then Little Kong reaches up and pulls him out and then puts him on top. And then he gets up on top and then Little Kong gets his foot stuck, right? Yeah. So he's sitting there trying to get it out. And then he picks and as the island keeps sinking, it's the water's at their feet now. There's no more mountain to climb. Little Kong grabs the man who killed his father. But. Sacrifice. But wrapped up his uh, his splinter. Of course. D- d- which did makes wrap- up for everything. Of course, yes. And then forgot. used him as a tool to get the treasure. <laughs> yes, of course. I completely forgot about that that cl- that, that clause. Um, Carl Denham is such a bastard. Yes. He's and, the most lovable bastard in anything I've ever seen. Little Kong is the most lovable, just just the most heart, like just full of heart, selfless He's, kind. Yeah, of what like, a kind creature. It's amazing. And Perfect. What, hap- what happens to Little Kong? Now he that sinks... And the only thing above is his hand holding Carl Still up holding while, he, Carl while the boat pulls up, and then he drops him in the boat. And right after he drops him in the boat, the hand sinks with the Band-Aid still on. And I'm Interesting like, to me that Kong can't swim, but I guess he's a baby. Well, his leg so. was stuck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right. And he couldn't get Damn, it out. Damn, that's brutal. He didn't have time to get it out. It was either get it out or save him. Yeah, yeah. And he chose he to save both him. hands. Exactly. And... Uh, they spend uh, we don't really know how much time on this little life raft and they see a cruise ship and they get up there and they well here's they intend on splitting the treasure four ways right yeah uh, the skipper Charlie who gets a, a share of the treasure a fourth share which is yeah. amazing come up and he's rich you know <laughs> Helen and uh, 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 Helen and Carl I yeah I can't believe that lot uh, that name escaped me. So they all get the, they're all splitting their share four ways, right? Uh, they're on the cruise that they that came out of nowhere and found them, and they're staring over the side. And Helen, they're sitting there having this really you know flirty romantic dialogue. And Helen goes, you know, instead of splitting the treasure four ways, I was thinking maybe Charlie, the skipper, and us. And then the movie ends. And I would like to point something out. If they would, it would have, still be split basically four ways, right? <laughs> like, no, because it's just, it's just, they're just combining. Like. No, because here's what happens, right? If you split the treasure four ways, you get, you know, you get three, you get four, you uh-huh. get four quarters, right? Yeah. You split the treasure three ways, you get thirty-three and a third. But right. they're only getting one thirty-three and a third, which exactly. is less than if they which both is, just... If they would have just combined their shares. Yeah. It ends on a bad math. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and I think they meant to Do you do. think it's on purpose? Like, she's like she's and, like a dumb circus girl and never had an education? Like, and it's... And as far as movie trilogies Her fucking goes, dad. You saw her dumbass drunk dad. Probably didn't teach her any math. As, as far as movie trilogies goes like as far as movie trilogies go what a rock what an actual ride like three uh, th- those might be the three most completely different movies <laughs> while still being literally the same like gorilla movie like <laughs> i just i i i cannot fathom why this guy 
I mean, I mean, I understand the fascination with gorillas. Believe me, that's, oh, yeah, that's you're, you're my the, thing. You're, you're I, the gorilla man. I gorillas love gorillas, right? Mm. But Ngagi is a very, very different movie in tone, in pace, in substance than King Kong and Son of Kong. However, it is the rightful prequel in inspiration. Therefore, I respect it. No, I completely understand like, that. And it like, inspired countless... In that same way. I, I mean, I, like, I respect it as an inspirational piece. And We get the birth of exploitation movies. We get the birth of grindhouse movies. We get the birth of kaiju We get. I was going to say, we, King Kong in general is cited so often as so many directors, like, moment of realization when they're like, I want to make movies. Like, this is the movie that made me want to, like make film like like uh, you could literally argue the movie itself just who who knows how many different things like like it spawned in terms of this director would not have ever made anything if, if they didn't watch king kong you know like i, I would it's kind of crazy like i would put the the Ngagi king kong trilogy whatever you want to call it probably at my number one spot for like trilogies which are just just enjoyable just experience. so diverse you get like exploitation real life gritty you know really just really nothing stuff. like like just played completely like straight and, and then, then you get king kong which is just the, like an artistic like you have the an artistic creative rendition of the exact like same we're putting story. our all into this yeah. and, and then you get we're gonna have fun and then like third is just we're having fun with this because like, you know what happens at the end of ngagi right i don't remember if i'm being completely honest the old geezer gets shot <laughs> He does, doesn't he? He does get murdered. And with that? That I is the that King thing. Kong trilogy. <laughs> That's our look at gorilla movies today, guys. <laughs> Future gorilla movies might include Bella Lugosi meets a Brooklyn gorilla. I was gonna no, say, we, 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 might, we might have to look at more uh, like White Pongo. a gorilla movie spinoffs here oh, soon. Yeah. Just to, just to like, like as, as, because there's plenty of like, Gorillas die down, but we're still yeah. we're still doing a ton of gorillas of in course. suits and, and the 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 everlasting effects of that would go mm-hmm. on for a while. It, it's an incredibly inspirational it, it, it's just it did so much. That trilogy, if you look at specifically the first two movies, did so much for cinema, including modern cinema and specifically cinema. And still does. Rock. Still continues to. Yes. Like and regardless of how this may uh, 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 present me as a human being, exploitation, grindhouse, monster, gritty movies are like my jam. Yeah, like that's that's the cream of the crop for me because that's raw cinema. That's people just putting their heart out, right? Because when Ishiro Hondo made Gojira, that was a passion piece for him. I mean, that was he, somebody who saw some stuff. Yes, like he, it's and that I view that the exact same way. At, at like Marion C. Cooper because Marion C. Cooper the same way that you feel that's about how, that's, how, that's how we get the birth of genre is pretty much you know, powerful yeah. shit yeah. Carl Dunn people want to do it people want to ape it Carl <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I cracked myself up yeah. it's, a, it's the ape genre is wonderful in a whole and it's incredibly diverse in, in tone and in, in also in, in in genre technically itself taking away the ape aspect you know um, but the King Kong story has been copied through and through, and the King Kong story that people don't really realize is the Ngagi story. That's the original. It's <laughs> been it's, living alive for it's ninety years. <laughs> goddamn strange to think about, but that's the truth of the matter. If I, if I if do some research on Ngagi, it's an interesting it's, story. It's, yeah, it's, it's, find find some connections there. I, I, Learn a little something. Watch the movie and then watch King Kong and then don't watch Ngagi again. Love, <laughs> yeah. love King Kong. <laughs> love it and cherish it and look at it through a lens. If if you if you look at King Kong and you just see oh, it's a '30s movie with you know and with boring dialogue because it's black and white. And you're not going to give it a chance. Just really watch the movie as a movie. Try and get lost in it. Yeah, it's phenomenal and if you like it watch son of kong if you don't don't watch son of kong you're gonna hate it more than son of kong to me is just like it's the best example of like un- understanding your audience and understanding like these meta like ideas of like okay if we're making this sequel and it's gonna be six months later it's obviously gonna be nowhere near the same scale so let's just have fun with it and let's 
let's change the genre, let's change like the style, the presentation in such a way that it works. Yes. Like and and I, I that's like genius to me. Like you don't see that at all anymore. Everyone wants to play it safe. And the thirties was just an influential time for movies. Anything that was really important started there. That and well, the tens, twenties and thirties, that was just the the foundation for it. You get a lot of I I almost consider King Kong like it's it's almost an art house movie in a way compared to what it was back then. Nowadays, obviously not. We it's it's there's it's things one of the that, first like movie movies if you think about well, it. Well, it's one of the first strongly gripping narrative movies. Yes, yeah, it's a narrative piece. It's got like a soundtrack mm-hmm. and like characters, and it's over an hour. This was still during this was during a time when movies didn't really know what they wanted to be no. because you know that's why we had well, a doggy. I mean, I mean like, <laughs> like we were talking about the hokey acting, but the only reason it's terribly hokey is because you got to keep in mind sound is such a relatively new thing for film at the time. And well, you well, couldn't even get as many years. takes just because yeah. it was more expensive to. To have well, more film, six like years it? for King Kong, three for Ngagi. Yeah, because he didn't get sound until the jazz singer, and that was twenty-seven. Mm-hmm. Was like, also, that's it's an okay movie. City Lights is better though. And that was the second movie for sound. That was the Charlie Chapman movie. Brilliant. But no, the, the King no, Kong. Where are you? Where are we? are we? are derailing here yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> we're, the King Kong. Yeah, Gorillas. King Kong, next time. Next time on Gorillas. Possibly the movies that I listen to. Earlier. Possibly next song, Gorillas. Are we doing that for the next episode? I think we can do Gorillas Part 2. Gorillas Part 2.